Okay, welcome back to history class. I have not been able to get our slides to completely work, but that's okay. I figured out a way that it will work, so I'll fix it for next class. For now, we'll have a short class. That's okay. Last time, what did we talk about? Salamanca vision. And after that, we we started to talk about the revival of the 1890s. And we learned that before the final judgments on the earth, there will be a revival. And this revival began in the 1890s. On February 18, 1892, Ellen White uh, wrote all the way from Australia. Protestantism is now reaching hands across the Gulf Last hands with the papacy. And a confederacy is being formed to trample out the site of the Sabbath for the fourth commandment. Ignore uh, <clears throat> this slide for now. Um, we're looking at some of the other ones that this projector is not wanting to project. Um, so, what did what did Ellen White say was about to happen? She said that the Protestant churches were about to reach across the ocean, as it were. And form an alliance. They would form an alliance together to do something specific. What was it? To trample out a certain thing. Yes, and how would they do this? They'd make a law. Uh huh. And what would you change it to? Mm -hmm. So this is the fulfillment of a prophecy in Revelation chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And in 1892, Ellen White said this is already happening. In other words, Protestant churches in America are beginning to put the Sunday law into effect. What year? Correct. Ten days after the article was written. So ten days after Ellen White said that they were about to combine forces and make a Sunday law. The Supreme Court, or 
the highest part of the government of the United States. They said America is now officially a Christian nation. Why is that so bad? Originally, America said we are a what country? What kind of country does America say they are? Oh, you say a rich country? It's a rich country. Okay, rich country. They don't say that about themselves. They say something specific about themselves. Okay, they think they're strong, but that's not why America was established. You remember the history of America's beginning? The people were fleeing from the Pope. Because there was so much persecution in Europe. So they said, we've got to get away from this. So they went all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and arrived in the New World, America. And they established themselves there, built houses, and built a government. And eventually they decided this is how we are going to run things. We are not going to make one religion that everyone has to follow. It's called the American Experiment. What's it called? Yeah. And what was that provision? It was this idea. We will not allow any persecutions. If you want to be Muslim, you can be Muslim. If you want to be Hindu, you can be Hindu. If you want to be Christian, you can be Christian. If you want to be atheist, you can be atheist. If you want to be Baptist or Protestant or, or Catholic or Adventist or um, Moravian, Baptist, Catholic, Adventist, Moravian. You can do that and no fear of persecution. In fact, we will protect people from persecution. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes or no? Why not? Mm -hmm. But they can, so you think it's better? Well, let's talk about this. Which is better for for a country to say, okay, everyone has to follow this one religion, or for a country? To Or for a country to say we've got to follow. Uh, got to, yeah, which is better for for the country to say we've got to keep one religion, or for a country to say you can follow whatever religion you want. So it's better to let people have their own decisions. You agree with that? With some conditions, right? 
example, what if there's a religion called the Church of Satan? Could they allow that religion? Kind of dangerous, right? But guess what? America does allow the Church of Satan. But there's some conditions. Those people, they want to follow their Satan Bible. Yes, Satan has a Bible. Did you know that? Yeah, there's, there's a Bible called the, the Bible of Satan. And there's a man who has written it. Very scary. I have never read it and I never want to because the people are so wicked. Now, let's say that the people in the Church of Satan want to go and murder some children at the school. What should the government do? <clears throat> oh, that's your religion. <coughs> Go ahead, kill those children. No, that's horrible. So basically, the government says you can follow your convictions, your religion. But you have to respect other people. In other words, if you're going to go around stealing things, obviously that's wrong. If you're going to go around murdering people, almost every person in the world, doesn't matter what religion you are, is going to say that's a bad idea. <laughs> and so the job of the government is to say, you are free to believe what you want, but you have to maintain order and respect. Now, here's what happens in a free country. A truly free country. I'm an Adventist Christian, and I decide I want to become Muslim, and I can work to Muslim. The government is going to say, "Okay, that's your choice," and we're going to protect your freedom of decision. So if your family starts to say a lot of bad things about you, about how you converted to Muslim, and then they start to say, you need to come back here or else. Then the government says, wait a second. He has the freedom to decide which religion he's going to follow. You can't murder him for that. Do you understand the example? Usually it's the other way around. Yeah, usually if you, if you want to switch being a follower of the Quran to being a follower of the Bible, then you will be persecuted and possibly murdered and killed. Yeah. <laughs> Many places in the world. So, 
is in prison. In a free country, if you want to be encouraged, then the government is going to protect you and you are going to decide. But it gets better. In the United States, back during this time, you have the freedom to preach whatever you want to. So if you're a Muslim preacher, you can preach whatever you want. You can preach in public. You can preach in church. Wherever you want to, you're free to do that. But the, uh, let's say an atheist also wants to share. Here's why I'm an atheist. They're also free to do that. And if the um, if another religion gets upset, <laughs> and says, "No, you can't preach that, or else we're going to kill you," you know, then the government says, "Whoa, they have the freedom to preach what they want to preach. You can preach what you want to preach, but don't fight about it with war, with guns, with knives." It's called freedom. It's called freedom of speech. You can, you can say whatever you want to and try to convince people. But you're not supposed to fight about it. What do you think of this idea? You like that idea? And in fact, because of this idea of freedom of speech, it enabled the Christians who wanted to follow the Bible to share their faith openly. To enable the Catholics to share open. And instead of someone who has more guns winning the war, it's the one who has the best truth. So, does anyone understand what Melissa said? Okay, I did a little response to that. So, 
let's say, a little church decides, ah, we're going to pay a bunch of people to join us. How is that going to work out for that church? The people that join that church are going to be like, oh, I joined this church because I get nice things. But then another church comes along, comes along and says, you want to join us because you're following the Bible. In the end, what church is going to be stronger? The one that follows the Bible. Because eventually that first church is just going to be like, oh, we don't really have a reason to follow what we're doing. We don't really believe it. Everyone just leaves. You know, you know, America is a powerful nation. The reason why God has made America prosperous is not because America is God's favor. It's the same reason why God made Jerusalem prosperous. You know, Jerusalem and Israel, it was the most prosperous nation in the world. Remember Solomon? It was the top of the top, the best of the best. No one was better than Jerusalem and Israel. Because of one main thing, Jerusalem obeyed God. God blesses obedience. And America decided we want to allow people the freedom to decide and choose. And when America did this, you had a bunch of churches preaching. We think this is true. We think this is true. And people started to think, okay, which one is true? Which one is true? And as people started to think logically, People decided we're going to follow this not because someone else is following it, but because we believe it's true. God, God bless them. And people started to think so much for themselves. God opened up their minds. You got inventions like the airplane, the modern banking system, the light bulb. So much modern things were invented in the United States. It's not because the United States is better than other countries. They followed an idea from the Bible. People could have freedom to choose. Choose who they will serve. Choose 
But to get back to our American, to get back to our uh, Adventist history, in 1892, America did something horrible. They said, we are a Christian nation. That meant that all those Muslims, all those atheists, all those other religions, they were no longer okay. They couldn't stay. Like, it wasn't right away they were going to be persecuted. But Europe before had said, we are Christian. And that was under the Catholic Church. If, if anyone that didn't go to the Catholic Church was considered a heretic. Anyone that disagreed with the Catholic Church is persecuted because those nations were Christian nations. All of the idea that if you're not a Christian, then you are a danger to society. So, 10 days after Ellen White said, Protestants and the Catholics are coming together, the court said America is a Christian nation. And then on August 5th, 1892, The, the United States got the first Sunday law. The first Sunday law. Okay, so that's where we'll stop now. We'll continue.